I like Linux a lot. I think you guys know this about me. I use Linux every day. It's my daily driver. I refuse to use Windows unless I absolutely have to. I don't own a Macintosh. I love Linux. I have a whole dedicated channel to Linux. It's right there in the name. But there are some overrated things when it comes to Linux, for sure. There are things that are definitely oversold to new users and uh, old users. These are the things that just... Eh, they're just a little overblown. So today we're going to talk about the eight most overrated things about GNU slash Linux. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd be really appreciative. It'd really help the channel. So first is a big one and one that's going to piss everybody off. I love these types of things. Also, camera, stop with the focus issues. I hate you. <laughs> uh, so the first one is open source. Linux is open source, and that's awesome. We would not want to change it. It's one of its premier features. It's the best thing ever. But one of the things that people tell you when you're switching to Linux is that Linux is good because you can review the code. Okay, boomer. No, nobody knows how to review the code. And when I say nobody, I mean in general, people don't know how to review the code because we're not. Most of us aren't developers. We're just regular Joe Smos who spend most of our time in our browser doing whatever it is that we do. We don't know how to go look at C or Rust or any of those things. We may not know what C or Rust actually are. So if someone comes up to you and tells you that a piece of software is good because you can review the code, just know that they're blowing a little bit of smoke up your ass. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that I want Linux to be proprietary. <laughs> I know there's someone in the comments saying, well, if you don't like that it's open source, go back and use Windows. No, I'm not going to go do that because I do like that Linux is, over, is, is open source. And I do have a sense of security knowing that there are people that are way smarter than me, way more ambitious than me, and who are actually developers out there able to look at the code and making make sure that things aren't going funky. So I enjoy that aspect of Linux, but the whole idea that anyone can open, go and look at the open source code and know what it means is overrated because the vast majority of people aren't going to be able to look at code and know what it means. So take that one as a generalization of we're not all developers. Stop treating us all like we're developers. So there you go. So that's the first one. Now, if I haven't pissed you all off yet, Keep watching. I got some more on here. I got I got you guys. All right. So the second one is choice. Now, I have been a big proponent of choice over the course of my Linux career. I tell everyone that Linux is about choice, that choice is a good thing, that there's a it's a good thing that there are so many distros, that there are so many package managers, that there are so many desktop environments and window managers. I think that's great. I made a video not too long ago complaining that there's not nearly enough choice in the Wayland compositor scene. So I like choice, and I think that is great, but it's also a little overrated, mostly because it also caused so, so many problems, and at the end of the day, Linux is going to Linux no matter what. It's all the same kernel underneath. There are just frills on top of it. So if you jump from OpenSUSE to Fedora to Ubuntu, I mean, that's fine. You can do that, but... Really, you're just using Linux at the end of the day, and your experience isn't going to be vastly different across those distros. Now, there are some caveats to that in terms of hardware compatibility and, and driver compatibility and stuff like that. I get that, but mostly Linux is going to feel like Linux no matter what distro you're using, and that means that the choice stuff doesn't, at the end of the day, really matter. So that also leads into the third one, which is very much tied to this, and that's distro hopping. Distro hopping, as much as I'm a proponent of trying all the distros that you can, like I said before, Linux is going to Linux. And that's basically what the end-all, be-all of it all. Linux is going to be exactly the same no matter what. It's Linux underneath. Now, the bells and whistles, the shiny stuff on top, the package manager, yeah, that stuff changes, but at the end of the day, is there that big of a difference between Pac-Man and Apt? No, not really, to be honest with you. Now, the Arch guys are going to get in the comments and say, yes, there is. It does so much more and is so much more powerful. It installs packages, guys. Just, that's what it does. Apt does the exact same thing. DNF does the exact same thing. Now, are there package managers that are worse? Sure. I mean... I'm a big OpenSUSE guy, and I will tell you that Zipper is not the best, but even then, it installs packages. What more are you asking it to do? So, 
at the end of the day, district hopping is okay, and chances are you'll do it for a little while, but eventually, once you find something that works, just stay there, because for the vast majority of us, everything else is just going to work exactly how that's going to work. So, there you go. The next one is security. Now, again, Matt, of course, Linux is secure. It's more secure than Windows. It's not sending all of your data to Redmond. That part's true. But... Overall, Linux is just as vulnerable to zero-day flaws and malware and ra ransomware as Windows is. It's just not targeted as much because nobody uses it. Again, nobody is in, you know, the vast majority of people use Windows. So, yes, it's more secure as in it's secure through obscurity, but that's slowly changing. And just because it has been true up till now doesn't mean it's always going to be true. And in terms of actually technically more secure completely false. So, when someone comes up and says, Linux is the most secure operating system in the world, I laugh at them because that's not true, and there are no most secure operating systems in the world. They're, they're all flawed in some way. So, that's just the nature of everything. Nothing is perfect. So, there you go. There's number four. Number five is rolling releases. So, I'm really attacking the Arch guys today, but Arch isn't the only rolling release. But, Chances are, you don't need the newest shit on the block. It's just absolutely the truth. Chances are, again, you don't need the newest stuff. So, you don't need a rolling release. And if you do need the need, the most recent stuff, like you say you need the most recent version of the NVIDIA drivers, that's like the biggest example of someone saying, well, I need this most recent version of something. You can probably get that on any distro. I'm just saying, you, if you want the most recent version of NVIDIA drivers, you can get those on Debian if you wanted to. There's a way to do it. If you wanted those on, a, on Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever, you can get those most recent versions, and that kind of dilutes the reason to run a rolling release. So, you don't need a rolling release, so just stop bragging about using one. Okay, all right. So the next one, and good lord, when I wrote these out, I really were was anti-arch. I think this was right after I did my arch short. So the next one on the list is the AUR. I mean, good, good lord, it's good, but it just builds things from source. You can do that on any distro. So yeah, it, it's it's a good repository. There's lots of stuff in it, but I have the OBS on OpenSUSE. It, it may not have as many packages theoretically, but it has everything that I've ever wanted from it. So. Is it just as good as the AUR? I think so. And therefore, if there is something just as good as the AUR, the AUR is not as special as everyone would lead you to believe. So there you go. There's another one. AAUR. Now, Arch Linux users, I apologize for apparently being out to get you. I don't know what I, what mood I was in when I made this list. So the next one on the list is luckily not anything to do with Arch. And that's Firefox. Firefox is overrated because it's not a good browser. It's just, it's not a good browser. It's an okay browser. It's usable. It's functional. It does most of the things you want a browser to do. But it moves so slow in terms of features. And when it does come up with the features, they're always kind of subpar. So like, ooh, we're going to get some AI. But it's not going to be as good of, as AI as any other ones, if you even consider AI good. You know, overall, it's just, it's a mad browser. And, you know, that's okay. Because I think the vast majority of browsers out there are mad browsers. Firefox just is one of those browsers that the open source people like to point and say, this is good, again, because it's open source. I, yeah, okay, I can go view the code. I'm not going to know what it means, but if that's the reason why Firefox is good, and then it's not actually good because that's not a good reason. And it doesn't mean it's not a reason. It's not the best reason to use it, I should say. So so saying it's not a good reason is, is not great, but overall... I just consider it a bit of, uh, an overrated browser because all I hear from open source zealots is that this is a good browser because it's open source and because it's run by a company that champions open source. But have you guys seen the Mozilla Corporation do anything that really says, you know what, we're champions of open source? Every time I hear that about them in the news, they're, they're trying to make money uh, to replace the money that they get from Google. They're... A corporation. They're not, I mean, that's what the. I mean, so there you go. I, I just think Firefox is a little bit overrated, and that's just my opinion on it. So the last one on the list, and goodness, I decided I was going to just seriously make everybody mad when I made this list. So my last one on the list is Suckless Software. That includes DWM, ST, and any of the others. And the reason why I say this is because Suckless just means that it's unusable out of the box. Now, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, see, uh, you can go back in time and go through some of the videos that I've made in the past. And at one point, I was a DWM, like, fanboy. I would tell you that DWM was the best window manager ever. And I still say that it's pretty damn good. And it is pretty damn good. But out of the box, it sucks. And it's not suck le sucks less, it sucks more. Because it can't do half the stuff you want to do with a window manager without adding a whole bunch of patches. Now, I personally think adding patches is a good thing. It allows you to build things up from source or whatever for, from and build it up into your own thing. But people will proclaim that suckless is just the way to go. But by the time I'm done building DWM up to the point where I can actually use it, it's no longer suckless. <laughs> Like, that thing has probably just as many lines of code in it as Qtile does, which is insane given that Qtile is coded in Python. So, Suckless Software, definitely overrated. Doesn't mean that it's not good. So, I should actually end the video there and tell you that just because I said something on this this list is is overrated doesn't mean that I don't think that it's good, okay? There's a different. I'm going to get into a little bit of an English professor situation here where I have to tell you that there are differences between words. Overrated does not equal bad, okay? It just doesn't. Bad is bad. Overrated just means that people put too much... They put it on a too high a pedestal and it's time to knock it down just a little bit. So if I pissed you off in this video at all... Leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me why. Now, if you have some unsubscribed for my video at this point, or if you're going to unsubscribe after this video, I'm sorry. But, and I'll be sad to see you go. But let's just say that I, eventually I was going to pitch something. If, if you were that close to unsubscribing, you were probably going to go anyways. So, uh, have fun on your YouTube voyages, I suppose. Anyways, that's it for this one. Again, comments in the comment section below if you have thoughts on any of this stuff. I'm sure you have many. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. You can also tell me all about your complaints about my crappy video over there by following me with the link in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, although I'm sure after this video I probably won't have any new ones. <laughs> so you can support me Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I think I already said that. Kofi and YouTube, those links will be, be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You guys are just amazing. So thank you so very much. Your support allows me to make videos like this one and piss everybody off. So there you go. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, whatever it is. I don't know when this video will be posted, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.